Hey there guys, it's Joey, and today's video is going to be a sort of Beltane musing video. I want to get this talky video done first, then I'm going to go record a whole load of um, activities you can make and things to do type videos for Beltane and try and get them all out today, just completely video all over the, all over everywhere. Lots and lots of videos, probably, hopefully. We'll see how today goes, it's been quite busy already. So... I'm not going to go into huge, huge amounts of detail about Beltane law and things like that. I have some key issues that I want to discuss a little bit. I have a book to recommend if you want to read more into Beltane law. And I'm going to discuss it from a personal perspective because I have a very, possibly very unique perspective at this time of year, which I don't see around very much. So... Before we go into my personal f feelings and difficulties with this time of the year, we will do the sort of overview. Now, I said I recommend a book, and this is it. It's the Sabbat's uh, Witch's Approach to Living the Old Ways by Edane McCoy. This book. And it's really great for everything about the sabbats and it has a lot more information it has um sort of where the term has come from and it has more than one perspective on where the term may have come from and it has different cultures perspectives on things um there's this i found interesting uh germanic and dianic covens celebrate beltane as a night of the dead and ancestors are asked to join them at the warmth of the fire in much the same way the celts do at Samhain. So that's interesting, you know, that, that there is that life and death balance even in different ways of celebrating the Sabbat itself. Now, the Sabbat in general, I, sh I shall not read any more from that for now, to me seems to be about duality. You have two very strong themes running through Beltane. You have one which is more whimsical, light-hearted, sort of the, all the fey magic, the, the flower magic, the, the gentle, the sparkle, the ah side of things, you know, the, the sweet side of Beltane, May Queens and, and, and things like that. And then you have the sort of more gur side of Beltane, which is the fire festival element, the sexual components of Beltane, that sort of more carnal side of, of Beltane. I think it makes sense about these two sides coming together because it's the god and the goddess coming together. It's two basic polarities coming together, duality, joining. There's a celebration of that as a celebration of fertility and sex. There's a celebration of that as love and, and the gentler side of things. And it's all supposed to be within a very positive realm. You have um, sort of feasting and dancing and celebrating and nature is blooming and all of those good things surrounding Beltane itself. So I love the idea of that duality coming together that masculine and, and masculine energies and female energies coming together in love, the celebration of um, sexual engagement in a positive sense, because there's so much negative sense often surrounding it. So a celebration of love and sex and joining of a, a loving union, union. I'm going to be all over the place with my words today. I'm going to have a sip of water. So there's something wonderful about that. And it is, of course, another one of these major Celtic festivals which divide the year up. And it's six months till Samhain, so there is that, again, that balance of life and death. And Beltane sort of tips the scales in the, in the light half of the year in the love in the life category, in that everything is blooming, everything in nature, etc. Whereas Samhain is tipping over into the dark half of the year with celebrating spirits and ancestors and the dead. However, that is still present with the uh, veil of the world. Oh, the veil between worlds being 
thinnest, which is why a lot of people celebrate fey magic, sort of the nature spirits are more active or as is part of the law and you'll see a lot of that going on and a lot of wishing and wish fulfillment going through the Beltane themes. Two really great videos if you want to um, go more in depth into that sort of law and things. Tiptoe Chick has a wonderful Beltane video out and Charming Pixie Flora's Beltane video is still up so that's still available for generalised information. So I'm going to talk now a little bit more about where I am at and I think it's important to do this because it sort of offers a personal perspective on this time of the year and it's also keying into what I think the energies are around at the minute. So I had another death cycle at this weekend and I wasn't expecting another one. Universe is driving this message home and thumping it in the face till I have black eyes apparently. And it was hard again. It it was hard again. And um, it kind of makes sense because we are approaching Beltane and Beltane is the balance, life and death. The same most our way is, but you know, you're tipping over. So I am hoping these are basically the, the ends of things that need to go to allow my life to change. Um, opening up lots of <laughs> positions for friends if anybody <laughs> anybody's lonely. So that's not quite what this death cycle was about. So it was basically one of my exes. And I don't usually stay friends with exes because it, it doesn't sit well with me. So I know some people can do it. And if you can do it, then like all power to you. But I can't. Uh, especially because a lot of them have hurt me quite I get quite invested like in all of my relationships with friends and things I put my whole heart in and it's risky business putting your whole heart in because you can get hurt just really badly and this guy had really badly hurt me because he basically when everything happens in my life at the most traumatic point and I obviously wasn't strong I was falling to pieces he abandoned me at that point because I wasn't strong anymore like I was too difficult I was too much to deal with he had his own life plan which I didn't fit into and he abandoned me at that point at that point maybe I should have just cut him out then and looking back on it maybe I should have and but he made an effort to stay in contact and things and I was I just allowed that to sort of maintain and he's one of those people that got under my skin and that's why I let him maintain he's one of those and anyway this weekend he he was like, oh, I've, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you sooner. I've been really busy. And usually when he goes on about really busy, it's because of how much work he does. And I was just like, oh, what have you been up to? Oh, well, you may have noticed I'm in a relationship now, so that's taking up all my time. He's a bit of a mind game guy, this guy, as you can probably tell. AKA, I'm too busy to deal with you because I found someone else. <laughs> And um, he, like I'd been watching his Facebook to see his status update, I'd actually disabled all updates from him for a while back, so I didn't know. And I was like, no, I've got to go to the cinema now, bye. I hadn't noticed, whatever. And I actually deleted him. And it's just another death cycle. It's just, I don't need that. I don't need people coming and being like, be jealous or uh, look how much better my life is without you in it. It's like, I don't need that in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you for trying to make me feel like a piece of shit, but I, I'm good, uh, bye. Um, <laughs> so it's basically the, apart from my sister, it's the last link to my childhood past. The last person I'd, um, I think I only had the two of them and both two have gone within a week of each other. So it truly and utterly is chop and going. And I had, <laughs> it's, it's kind of sad because it's kind of like my childhood is now just gone. You know, my teenage years are just now gone. And I've had several messages from the universe 
about this. So the first one was sort of, um, do you know what you have to do in order to become who you want to be? You have to kill off who you were. You have to burn up. You have to basically burn off who you were, burn off everything before this point and phoenix-like evolve into something else. And I wrote something else down. I don't have to find that. I can find that. It's all right. And that was the first message. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> that's Babe. <laughs> And it was it was very definite, very, you know. And I just started um, getting into the Beltane spirit as well when all this happened because I've had other problems from my past with this time of year. So that was a that was something on top of it. So that was the first message, and I was like, okay. And she encouraged me to do some cutting the cord stuff, and I did. I mean, she sort of sort of suggested it but it's up to you because it's obviously your decision and that's how the Morrigan works. So I did all that and, and cut it, all the energies off and just step back from that. So I'm hoping that's the fi final death cycle before Beltane. We've at least Beltane stops tomorrow evening so hopefully I'm done. Uh, my entire childhood is now gone so <laughs> and the other thing about me having um, trouble at this time of year is something I had spoken to and confessed to the Morrigan about, which is um, that I have problems with this time of year because of it being May, and May is when my mother's birthday was, and every single year without fail, it was hell on earth for me and my middle sister in particular. Every single year, um, she used to raise Mary hell about her birthday she wouldn't tell us what she wanted for her birthday like we would ask what would you like nothing and you know you bought her nothing good luck to you and everything you bought her was wrong if you bought chocolates you should have been aware she was dieting if you bought her flowers you didn't give a sh about her enough if I one year I bought her this makeup set and I saved up for it and it was boots 17 no not 17 17's the cheaper one. Boots number seven. And it was a great big makeup thing like this. And it was all her shades, like her earthy tone shades. And I had a mirror in and a mascara in and all the rest of it in. And I like thought, I got it. I thought, you know, this this year she'll like, she shoved it under the bed. Um, never used it. Even though it was her tones and her makeup brand because I bought it basically and one year me and my sister had no money and we made up like this pamper box for her and every time we had a little bit of money we went and bought something and put it into it and that we um, created and decorated the box as well so a whole ton of effort went into it and loads of little things went into it so like nail clippers, nail varnish, nail file, um, all lots of little things as, as we could afford them and she unwrapped it, looked at it and went, what is this? Laughed at it and threw it. So every single year, without fail, um, May filled me and my sister with a sense of dread. And the problem is, even now, I can't shake that feeling completely. And I just found ways around it. I was finding pictures and ideas for Beltane and going into myself and coming up with ideas of what I wanted to do and things that I hadn't heard of other people doing but I thought that was a good idea and trying to pick up on those energies of Beltane and then whack, death cycle at the weekend. So then I had another message which is a much nicer message and this is how I am going to be approaching Beltane this year. This is written by me, inspired by the goddess or divinely inspired, however you want to see it. It's just um, sort of poetry, sort of. Uh, remember how to warm your heart and hold your head up high and feel the earth underfoot whilst glimpsing at the sky. Beltane's afoot, so dance and sing against the fire line. Let go of all that poisons you and allow yourself to shine. So that message came and that poetry came through me. And 
that's how I am going to be approaching Beltane. I think it's really vitally important at this time of year that we stave off a little bit from just completely investing in the whole um, love with somebody else Beltane imagery. I mean, that's fine. If you're in a happy relationship and everything, you can celebrate that, no questions. But I think we need to focus on self-healing, self-love, self-confidence, self... I don't know. To learn to love oneself and to let go of everything that is poisoning us, the toxic people that are still hurting us. We're allowing these people to hurt us and we shouldn't be, you know, what are they serving other than to make us feel bad about ourselves? That, that's not a friend. That's not anything. It's just holding on to something that we shouldn't be. And I'm actually going to record a video about um, how to cut cords leading up to or on Beltane. Beltane is a fire festival. You just cut up that negativity, throw it in the fire and burn it off. And some people are a little bit argumentative about this idea because they're like, Beltane should be purely about being happy and free and joy. And, and if you can engage in that without, you know, anything bringing you down, then fine. But a lot of us, especially this year, have so much crap going on that I think we need to utilise that side of the Beltane fire and so that we can burn off what we don't need and take in the energies that we do need for making us feel better and feel happy and to take care of ourselves. We forget to take care of ourselves, of our mental well-being, of our emotional well-being and even our physical well-being. I mean, that's the stage I'm also going through, which is dieting and exercise. Yay! <laughs> Um, and I've had to get back on track with that because these death cycles have thrown me through a loop and I haven't kept it up. I just haven't had the energy. I haven't had the willpower and I've had to push back into that healthy regime. So Beltane is a great time for all of that sort of thing and to focus on being kind to yourself. No, I love the quote from um Mem Memoirs of a Geisha, which is, none of us receive as much kindness in this life as we should. And I always say, um, be kind, you can't rewind, as like a play on the uh, be kind, rewind video thing. And it's because you can't take it back. You cannot take it back once you've done it. So just be kind, because none of us do receive as much kindness in this life as we should and that goes for how we treat ourselves as well as other people so that's where my focus this spell chain is going to be i'm going to be doing work magic to sort of pick myself up i'm going to be doing magic to open myself up to new friendships i'm going to be doing stuff to i've already done my cut the cord and i may well do a little bit of a burn off negativity before i do all the positive work through Beltane and some divination as well and stuff and I will do videos on each of these subjects probably cam camera held cam oh give up <laughs> video camera ham held Ugh. videos <laughs> so empowering self there we go it's a really great time of year to empower yourself even if you are going through all these death cycles, which I certainly am. So that's going to be it for the talkie video. I have covered everything I wanted to. So that's going to be it for this video. And I'm going to go and start all the many, many things that need doing and creating and videos now for Beltane. So many blessings.